to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about acute myeloid leukemia. Leukemia is an abnormal proliferation of hemopoietic cells, especially white blood cells. When these white blood cells are excessively produced, what we should understand is these cells are immature. They cannot perform their activities and they also invade the bone marrow and they reduces the space for production of uh, RBCs and patient develops anemia. They also reduces the production of platelets that produces bleeding tendencies. So the WBC counts are very high, but they are immature cells. They cannot perform the activities of a normal white cells like immunity can be low and patient also can have anemia. Uh, thrombocytopenia, severe bone tenderness, all these things can be there in leukemia. When we classify leukemia, uh, we can see that hematological classification of hematological malignancies are classified into myeloid disorders and lymphoid disorders. In myeloid disorder, you have acute myeloid leukemia, lymphoid disorder also you have acute lymphoid leukemia. Chronic diseases like chronic myeloid disorders are again classified to chronic myeloid leukemia myeloid dysplastic syndrome, a typical chronic myeloid disorder and chronic myeloproliferative disorders. In myeloproliferative disorders, you can see that polycythemia where essential thrombocythemia, uh, myelofibrosis with myeloid metaplasia, uh, chronic lymphoid leukemia also there in chronic uh, lymphos, lymphoid disorders. And we will discuss about acute myeloid leukemia. It is mainly a malignant disorder of bone marrow and hemopoietic precursors are produced like uh, uh, immature cells are produced from the bone marrow. Mature cells are not there. The large number of immature cells are produced from the bone marrow. Bone marrow is full of immature cells. So normal production of WBC, RBC, platelets all are disordered. It's a very common disease. Uh, it's, it's commonly seen, this disease is commonly seen after age 65. So this disease is commonly seen in elderly individuals uh, um, compared to other uh, hematological disorders. It, it is the second most common category of leukemia in adult and most common type, type of acute leukemia. The outcome of uh, AML is very poor. Survival is only 28 uh, to 28 percentage. It is associated with very chrom uh, varying chromosomal disorders. So you can see here different types of chromosomal abnormalities. Some of the things we can see here: transcription factors, retinoic acid receptor alpha, core binding factor, CCAAT, and Hanser binding protein alpha. Is histone lysine n methyl transferase 10 11 translocation tumor protein p53 suppressors wimps tumor suppressor gene dna repair tp53 and many other abnormalities also can be seen in uh, aml type of patients we don't know which uh, disorder is causing uh, this acute myeloid leukemia. But these are the common uh, chromosomal abnormalities uh, seen in patients who are using AML. Now, WHO is, uh, has classified AML into various types. AML with recurrent genetical, genetic abnormalities what we have seen in the previous slide. AML with myeloid dysplastic syndrome and related features. Treatment related AML and myelodysplastic syndrome, AML not otherwise specified, myeloid sarcoma, myeloid proliferation related to Down syndrome. So these are the uh, classification given by uh, World Health Organization. Now we can see the clinical features of uh, uh, leukemia, AML. Anemia is the most important clinical feature because uh, the bone marrow is full of uh, immature white cells. So the production of uh, RBCs are reduced. Patient can have easy fatigability, palpitation, cardiac failure, edema. So many features of anemia can be there. Granulocytopenia that means 
normal wbc counts are reduced abnormal counts may be increased or sometimes it can be normal or it can be low also but granulocytopenia means the normal mature white cells are reduced they are the main factors which prevent infection to our body so whenever there is any bacteria or virus attacks our body granulocytes try to prevent these attacks so these cells are not there or mature uh, wbcs are not there patient can have fever recurrent infection sore throat <coughs> various other problems like abscesses thrombocytopenia again like anemia bone marrow is full of abnormal white cells patient can have petechial rashes patient can have bleeding tendencies gum bleeding then disseminated intravascular coagulation is uh, another important bleeding problem which can be present in various hematological malignancies splenomegaly because of the abnormal cells they will be destroyed in the spleen and spleen become a, a, an organ uh, like whenever there is a bone marrow infiltration or bone marrow failure spleen also will be either infiltrated or sometimes it can enlarge uh, because of the unusual destruction of the cells so patient can have abdominal dis- discomfort and early satiety gum hypertrophy is very important feature of monocytic leukemia skin infiltration again monocytic leukemia chloroma is a mass lesion in the soft tissues so these are the unusual findings seen in leukemia but gum hypertrophy is very very common in many patients who is having uh, leukemia hepatosplenomegaly is common in most of the hematological disorders so hepatosplenomegaly can be there lymphadenopathy can be there sternal tenderness is very important finding because an unusual uh, abnormal production of cells in the bone marrow so stretching of uh, bone marrow capsule bone capsule uh, can produce uh, periosteum there is a capsule that can produce uh, tenderness headache or focal neurological complaints can be there in central nervous system hemorrhages or leukemic meningitis bleeding or coagulation abnormalities like severe thrombocytopenia disseminated intravascular coagulation tumor lysis syndrome patient can have hyperkalemia hyperphosphatemia hyperuricemia or renal insufficiency now when we see the lab investigations we can see important findings like patient can have severe anemia normocytic normochromic thrombocytopenia elevated wbc count that is very important up to 1 lakh uh, you can see in many patients the counts are acutely elevated to more than 1 lakh you can see elevation of uric acid is another important factor whenever the bone marrow is over uh, stimulated you can see uric acid is produced ldh indicates hemolysis alkaline phosphatases again bone bone problem you can get elevated alkaline phosphatases then peripheral smear shows numerous blast cells that is the classical finding numerous blast cells are seen in peripheral cells with or rods in the blast cells we'll see what is or rods so bone marrow again shows presence of 20% myeloblast blast forms must be confirmed as cells of the myeloid lineage presence of myeloid antigen or blast cell surface is detected by flow cytometry so flow cytometry has to be done to know whether this patient is having uh, this myeloblast or not you can see the or rods needle like filaments of primary granules is indicative of acute myeloid leukemia so you can see the or rods here they are very classical for aml so or rods again uh, we can see here there is a spindle like shadow in the cells inside the cells that is or rod needle like filaments of primary granules so you can see here plenty of blast cells with or rods in the second slide first slide is a normal uh, slide for uh, bone marrow now who is have is having a diagnostic criteria uh, any one of the following should be there more than 20% of the myeloid blast in peripheral blood or bone marrow that is enough any more than one of the following so like uh, when we do cytogenetic 
examination any more than one any any of the uh, following feature has to be there or myeloid sarcoma so these are the important things in that most common thing is uh, peripheral smear or uh, bone marrow study shows more than 20% myeloid blast other abnormalities you can see here in the uh, second part of the uh, slide it should be confirmed with cytogenetic study now once we make a diagnosis of uh, aml the important problem in emergency room is these patients can have severe anemia they can have cardiac failure they can have acute problems like breathlessness pulmonary edema peripheral edema all these things can be there because of thrombocytopenia they can have severe bleeding bleeding into the uh, oral cavity bleeding into the uh, skin bleeding into the intracranial compartment like patient can have raised icp seizures all these things because of low wbc count that means normal wbcs are reduced abnormal wbcs are high in number when the normal mature wbcs are low patient can admit with uh, various infections Uh, so high degree fever can be there chills can be there rigor can be there patient can have abscess pneumonia urinary tract infection so many abnormalities uh, can be there and patient can admit with these findings so these are the drugs uh, can be used for uh, aml this is called as 3 plus 7 regime cytarbin 100 to 200 mg per meter square daily as a continuous infusion for 7 days Danorubasin 60 to 90 mg per meter square IV push on each first 3 days of the treatment this is 3 plus 7 regime other regime is cytarbin plus danorubasin in a different regime third one is cytarbin plus idaribisin uh, here idaribisin dose is 12 to 13 mg per meter square IV push on each of the first three days of treatment so these are the multiple regimes but uh, first regime that is 3 plus 7 regime is most commonly used regime for chemotherapy induction regime so this is induction regime then we have to go for consolidation re- regime once the patient is stabilized high dose cytarbin 3 g per meter square every 12 hour on days 1 3 and 5 that is consolidation treatment now addition to 3, 3 plus 7 regime depending on the cytogenetic risk we have three more important drugs uh, midostarin it can be add, added to 3 plus 7 regime in patients with flt3 itd tyrosine kinase domain mutations in patients with favorable or intermediate risk cytogenetics and cd33 positive diseases you can use gemtuzumab to add to 3 to 7 regime venetoclax plus azacitidine can be preferred options in patients who are more than 30, 60 years old who are ineligible or refuse to intensive remission induction therapy so these are the regimens can be used for aml in addition to 3 plus 7 regimen so we have discussed about uh, one of the important leukemia aml whatever may be the type of leukemia important problems in leukemia are patient can have severe anemia related complications patient can have anemia with cardiac failure anemia due, anemia can induce weakness and patient can have uh, uh, thrombocytopenia related bleeding issues patient can also have uh, low wbc normal wbc count and can have multiple infections and some patients present to er with disseminated intravascular coagulation that is a, one of the most common presentation of uh, uh, any type of leukemia or any type of hematological uh, malignancy 
they come to ER with uh, acute disseminated intravascular coagulation. We can see in that patient uh, PT is prolonged, APTT is prolonged, fibrinogen is reduced. This patient should be treated with FFP and cryoprecipitate. Thank you.